Welcome to week two of the Hoover Campaign question and answer series. The original rules apply today. We won't repeat them, we won't bore you with them. Okay, the first questioner, go ahead with your question. What are your views on medical marijuana? My views on medical marijuana go back to a, chi uh, a child that was cured with Lorenzo's oil. It was a, a condition that had to do with the nerves, the sheath around the nerves. And it, and, and it wasn't medical marijuana, but it was a breakthrough uh, in treatment uh, for, I believe, multiple sclerosis or, or a condition like that. So I believe that everything we really need to heal ourselves, heal our bodies, God put on the earth in a natural form. And marijuana is a natural form. Now, I'm not a proponent of uh, airline pilots uh, stoking up and, you know, doing a big fat doobie before they take off with you in the back. And I'm not a proponent of uh, uh, train engineers stoking up and, and doing a big doobie before they head out with their train. I'm not in favor of your surgeon stoking up and doing a big doobie before he cuts you open and operates on you. But I know that, in, that there's marijuana oil or, or the oil of the marijuana plant that is healing children or lessening their suffering. And for no other reason than those children, I would be in favor of medical marijuana. Now I'll take that one step further. Recreational marijuana. Uh, I'm not necessarily in favor of it, but I'm willing to do this. If you are willing to get a federal ID card that identifies you as a stoner, then I'm willing to not arrest you or put you in jail if you keep your stoner card on you at all times. Now, what does this stoner card entitle you to do? It entitles you to possess a recreational amount of marijuana, to smoke it in a non-public place, enjoy it as much as you like, Watch When Harry Met Sally, stoned. Listen to um, uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, stoned. It'll be a great experience. But now this is what you don't get. You don't get to drive. You don't get any federal aid. You don't get any health care. You don't get anything from the United States government except the right and privilege to smoke marijuana recreationally and carry your stoner's card. So if you're that committed to being a stoner, join the club and abide by the rules. No problem. You mentioned NASCAR. Is it true that you were taught to drive by Dale Earnhardt Sr.? I did mention NASCAR, and I was taught to drive by Dale Earnhardt Sr. At the time, I was interested in getting into racing and I just wanted to see if I had the right stuff to be a race car driver because I wasn't like Danica Patrick who, who got to race go-karts and then went into the next level and the next level and the next level and then she got into NASCAR and I actually tweeted that she won that race recently uh, at um, where was it Dover? No, it was uh, upstate New York. I thought she was going to win that race because like King Richard Petty, who said she could only win a race if she was the only car on the track, I felt like she was going to be the only car on the track. The problem was there weren't enough wrecks after that point, after she was leading, to let her win. So Dale Sr. taught me to drive. Uh, a NASCAR type car and, and I can tell you he did it by saying the same two words over and over and over and over again and those two words are don't lift, don't lift, don't lift, don't lift, don't lift and he was talking about don't lift the, my foot off of the accelerator. To Dale Sr. there was one uh, one accelerator setting and that that is flat wide out. Now 
if he if he had to adjust his speed, he did it by swapping paint. He did it by throwing somebody into the wall. He did it by intimidation. And I also learned how to intimidate by Dale Sr. And as I get into my pregnant my presidency, I'm not getting pregnant. As I get into my presidency, you will see the art of intimidation at its very best. Now, I want to say a word to number 10, Danica Patrick. And I want to look right into the camera so she can see my pretty blue eyes. Danica, I'm going to repeat my challenge. A 64-year-old candidate for the presidency of the United States who has never driven professionally a race car, especially a NASCAR, I challenge you to a one-on-one -on -one race. And I expect you to follow King Arthur's uh, oath of chivalry and make sure that you don't cheat and that it's completely even. Now, to make sure that it's even, I would like to go to uh, the United Kingdom and get with the original cast of Top Gear, and that is, in order of importance, James May, Richard Hammond, and Jeremy Clarkson. That's in order of importance. And, and we can do that little, that little, uh, little commuter car, the little uh, city car that they have, and, and we can post our times, Danica, on the board. And if you beat me, your time will be above me. And if I beat you, I'll, I'll be above you. <laughs> and I'm willing, to, I'm willing to do it either way. It's, it's your call. You can be on top. You can be, you can be on bottom. Now, King Richard Petty, I'm going to issue the same challenge to you since you've been so rough on the girl I love. I'll race you as long as it's straight up even. Anywhere, any place, anytime. And uh, I look forward to it. And it'll all be in the spirit of the original NASCAR drivers. Let's go out there and have a good time and give the audience what they paid their money for. It doesn't matter really who won as you heard. <laughs> How can we get the police to stop shooting unarmed people? We can get the police to stop shooting unarmed people in the following ways. Number one, and I love the police. I have a blue line license plate on every single vehicle I own, every airplane I own, every helicopter I own, every race boat I own, I am a blue line person. I would lay down my life for an officer of the law, male or female, straight or gay, straight or lesbian, makes no difference. I would lay down my life for an officer of the law if I needed to, to save that officer's life. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get them into shape. They're gonna have to take an annual physical that would let them chase down a suspect rather than shooting them in the back. Just makes sense to me. I hope it does everyone else. And I hope I get a chance to train with some of these police departments. Secondly, the United States Secret Service, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the U.S. Marshals will all conduct paintball exercises with every law enforcement agency in the United States. They will get plenty of time to shoot people, shoot each other, without having to do citizens, unarmed citizens, especially black citizens. And I think, you know, I have a friend in Chicago, his name's Dave. I called him Big Dave when we sold Nissans together. And Big Dave and I always used to teach, tease each other, why has it always got to be about race? Well, in this case, it's got to be about race because there's an un improportional number, that's probably a George W. Bush word, improportional, but there's an improportional number of black unarmed citizens 
uh, being killed by police. And I don't know why. I mean, I have some theories. I think they're overworked. I think they're underpaid. I think they're under immense stress and the paintball will relieve some of that stress and the exercise with the President of the United States, the Secret Service, the FBI, the U.S. Marshals, that will relieve some of the stress. We're going to start recognizing outstanding officers. I'm going to come up with a uh, award much like the Presidential Medal of Freedom. This is going to be the Presidential Medal of Law Enforcement and I'll award a certain number of them every year. And so law enforcement officers can strive for that and that might cut down on it. But what I'm going to do for the Black Lives Matter crowd and the Black Lives is whenever an unarmed black suspect is shot and killed for any reason, I don't care what the reason is, if they're unarmed or even if they're, no, if they're unarmed and they're shot and killed, I'm going to go to the prison closest to the spot that the killing occurred and I'm going to release two black prisoners that are serving life terms and they're going to be told you've got this second chance in life because of the killing. For instance, uh, Trayvon Martin, uh, somebody that I wish I could bring back from the dead, but I can't. He deserves to come back from the dead. He did not deserve to die. The guy that shot him is a despicable human being, in my opinion. I would go to the prison closest to, uh, I believe it was Tampa, Florida or Sarasota, I don't remember, but and I would release two black prisoners that are serving life sentences for whatever crime, I don't care, even murder, because I don't think they would recommit murder. I do think George Zimmerman or whatever, George Zimmer would commit murder again. Uh, and, they, and they will be told, you have this second chance of life because of Trayvon Martin. And they should go through the rest of their second chance thanking every day Trayvon Martin for giving his life for them to have a second chance. I'll try that. If it doesn't work, I'll come up with some more ideas, but that's, that's what I've got right now. What does your plant prevent illegal immigration across our borders? Well, as many of you know, and there's a lot of staffers in the uh, office here observing the, uh, this taping, uh, as many of you know, my, one of my opponents, little d, little t, wants to build a B-I-G wall. And that's a A-S-S-I-N-E idea, and I'll tell you why. When you have a big wall like that, let's say that it goes from San Diego to Charleston. Can you not go to the end of the wall and go around the wall to get into the United States? Just swim out into the ocean a little ways and then swim back in on the other side of the wall? Come on, folks! Don't let that carnival barker fool you and, and tell you that that's going to solve the problem. This is how I'm going to solve it. And I do want a wall, but not in the United States. Somebody will ask me a question later, and I'll tell you where I do want the wall. I will take bulldozers built by Caterpillar, John Deere, Case. Anybody know any other bulldozers built? I think that's all of them. We're, we're down to just three, I think. Uh, write to me if I missed one. And we're going to clear a football field wide, 100 yard area on our border. I don't care what's there now, it's going to be bulldozed down. Trees, buildings, amusement parks, I don't care. There's going to be a 100 yard wide ribbon of bare earth between the United States and Mexico. And if this works between United States and Mexico, I'll implement it in Canada if anybody proves to me that anybody's coming into this country through Canada. I think we all know what direction the illegal immigrants are headed when they get here, north. Um, once that land is cleared, I'm either going to build gun towers, gun turrets, or I'm going to uh, raise blimps on tethers with um, drones, not drones that fly, but just drones that hang off of a blimp that have machine guns on them. 
And then in every known language in that football field area, I'm going that'll have some concertina wire and some barbed wire. I'm going to put a sign in every known language, even sign language, that says, you are attempting to enter a sovereign nation illegally. You will be shot. And every evening at sundown when we lower the flags at the border crossing areas, we're going to fire those machine guns just in case somebody's close to that 100-yard region and doubts whether or not those machine guns really fire. That's how I'm going to solve illegal immigration from the South.